Christmas, come and gone, common time, come and gone, Ash Wednesday, what a wonderful night that we had. We had an amazing group of people where we were able to uh, worship together, communion, ashes, and then a wonderful meal that was provided for us afterwards. So today, we begin a new sermon series for Lent. It's going to be called Emmanuel, God with us. I ask you to pick up a book and read along. You could read the whole thing, but follow it week by week because there's going to be more material in the book than I can present on any given Sunday. So with that, let's pray. Each week, Lord, we ask you to open our minds so that we can begin to, to understand you in ways that maybe we've never understood you before. Open our hearts so that we can experience you in a new way. Help us to have hearts open for others that are around us as well. And we put this into your son's holy name. Amen. I want to take you to a town in which I pastored. It's an old town. And in this town, it had a park and it had several churches around this park. What was interesting, when the town was being developed, when people were moving in, and as the churches were being built, they wanted their church to be attractive to people coming in. And a competition began. Every church thought that if they built their spire higher than the other one, they'd be closer to God. And if they were closer to God, then people would want to worship at their church. So it all depended how tall your steeple was, was how important your church was. Well, wasn't the church I pastored, but the one next door, their steeple was actually 11 inches higher than ours. So I guess they were closer to God. But that's really not what it's about. It's not how big our steeple is. So what we found on Ash Wednesday is that in the book of Exodus, there was the people, the descendants of Abraham, they ended up in Egypt and stayed for 400 years. They came in as a mighty group of people. Unfortunately, they became slaves, and over time, they began to call out for God. God, come and save us. Well, through Moses, God moved in and began to uh, bring that covenant back, that if they chose God as their, as, as their God, then God would choose them to be a special people, a chosen group of people. And so Moses was called, and through the plagues, they were pushed out of Egypt, and they were on their way to Mount Sinai. And on uh, Ash Wednesday, we went over that trip. And we saw all of the places and where God showed up. But I want to bring us to where they are at now. They are at the bottom of Mount Sinai. And we see in the Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, God is talking to Moses. And what he says is, And have them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. In accordance all that I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and all of its furniture, so you shall make it. Well, that's what God is asking them to do, was to make a tabernacle, was to make a place where God could come and dwell amongst them. But here's what's interesting about where that tabernacle, where the, where the wilderness tabernacle set was in the very center of their camp. Now imagine there are 12 tribes. The one tribe is the Levites, and they were to take care of the tabernacle. They were to be the priest 
to the nation. And so they literally were the closest to the tabernacle on all four sides. And then the rest of the, uh, the Israelites by tribe were set on all different four sides. So here God's dwelling was in the very center of the camp. God wanted to be at the center of their lives. Now there was a word that uh, the, the writer used that described what it meant to dwell. Let me take you to page 31 in this book. And here's what I'm, is what it reads. A closer study of the word dwell, sakan, in the original language may have caused for some debate or at least some tension. The word for dwell could have been bo, which has a connotation of coming and going. In other words, bo would mean that God is not um, seeing them as important. It would be more of a distant God, a God that, you know, come and go, whatever. Well, then uh, the other word, another word for dwell could have been used is yasab, which would have meant to be a permanent inhabitant. But instead, what we see is the word sakan. This word, uh, it means that God is personally invested, but yet not tied. In other words, the people didn't control God. God came by choice, but if something happened, God was not uh, stuck there, was not in a permanent situation. So if they rebelled, God could leave. But so, so that, that's the intent, was to show that God was not a distant God, God was not a slave to them, but this God chose to be with them as long as they were choosing to be with him. So let's take a look at what God is saying by being the center of camp. He says, I want to spend time with you. I want to live with you. In fact, more than just live with you, I want to become the very center of of your life. Think of that. As they were walking around on their daily life, if they had to go see a friend that was in another tribe, they would have to go past the tabernacle. So whatever they were doing in their daily life, going and tending their flocks, whatever it was, the tabernacle and God were at the very center. No matter what they did, God was there. I want to take us into uh, the book of John, the very first chapter. And let me read to you. And it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not a thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone who was coming into the world. That section is always entitled, and the word became flesh. Jesus humbled. We went through Advent, went through Christmas, so we know that Jesus was born into this world to be both man and God. But what was the purpose of coming into the world? It is to basically to, to reiterate what was happening in that account back in the Old Testament, back at the wilderness tabernacle, where God says, I want to be the center of your life, here Jesus comes to do the same thing. Not in spirit, but now in flesh. Jesus is saying, I want to spend time with you. And we see that through the lives of the disciples. He wants to live with you. We see that with the life of the disciples. He says, I want to be part 
of your life, to be the center of your life. Now we see that in the stories. Jesus had meals with people. He was the center of the party. There was family. And so wherever Jesus was at, he was saying, I want to be with you. I want to live with you. That's what the message is for us today. God is not a distant God. God is not a God that is is in our back pocket, as we normally will say. We don't have Jesus stuck there and pull him out when we want him. But Jesus wants to walk with us. Jesus wants to be in the center of our life. So as we go to work, as we sit with our family, as we go to different events in our life, we bring Jesus with us. We, we, we walk with Jesus. Jesus is a part of everything that we do. Say like our marriage or our family, Jesus becomes the center of our life. That's the message. Jesus wants to be the center. Now the question is, Have you made Jesus the center of your life? Are you allowing Jesus to be the center of your life? Or have you crowded Jesus to the outside of the camp? Have you crowded Jesus maybe to the next county over, the next state? How close is Jesus to you? That's where we begin our season of Lent, is drawing closer to Jesus and saying, Jesus, during this time, I'm going to begin to reflect on you and what you've done in my life and now what I I want to do with you with the rest of my life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this time that we can begin to reflect on all the areas in which you came into our life and you've cared for us. We want to draw nearer to you now in this time of Lent. Help us to begin to see ways that you've been the center of our life and help us to find more ways to keep you at the center of our life. We thank you for all of this. Amen. Get a book and then come worship with us. And by chance, if you aren't able to worship with us on Sunday, you can ask to join our Zoom meeting on Thursday nights. And we have a a mini version of what the sermon is and what the worship is like on Sundays. Talk to you later.